We are here in Paul Ehrlich's uh, working office. This has been turned into a sort of a museum because it's adjacent to his former laboratory. Paul Ehrlich was the founder of chemotherapy. His major achievement was to observe that we could kill specifically this treatment, these parasites, in a body by using these colors from a chemical company which was not known before. It's a complete different way of approaching a disease. At his Nobel Prize lecture in 1908, Professor Ehrlich uh, mentioned uh, the great work that he did, but also said there are many gaps in the research, and that it was his hope that the next generation of scientists would fill in the gaps so we could understand the power of the immune system. Well, here we are 100 years later, now starting to fill in those gaps by using mass genetic sequencers, bioinformatics programs, very powerful computers. We're now understanding the language of the immune system. Howard doesn't look into single values of the immune status, but he looks at the, at the history of the immune system and gives you a complete picture of what has happened to this individual person which sits in front of you. And this was, for me, the fascinating news in his research. Personalized medicine means that you have a language of your immune system that is quite different from even your brother and sister. We were able to realize that we could see things in cancer like single mutations called SNPs. But the limitations of SNPs is it doesn't happen in all people. We need to find a way how we can make as simple as possible your exact problems. Genetics at the University of Iowa have been a really important part of some of the rare diseases that we've been studying certainly understanding the genetics of cystic fibrosis that's been a game changer in trying to understand who might respond to one uh, therapy versus another if you can identify for example biomarkers that are associated with a poor prognosis for covid hence i'm wearing this mask then we would know prior to that person having a poor outcome that they were at risk for a poor outcome our sequencing operation at the Iowa Institute of Human Genetics started in 2012, and we've been supporting both the basic research scientists as well as the clinical scientists in providing genome-based analysis using our instrumentation. We need to start sequencing cells at the single cell level. Imagine now mast cells, neutrophils, granulocytes, eosinophils, all of these things being sequenced one by one and then we will learn what the language is of each individual cell. Because we're looking at trillions of pieces of information, the artificial intelligence programs will help us decode what is the language, what is the paragraphs, the sentences, and what is in fact the whole book. We actually take all that data and let it, let the program, let the machine learning approach guide us to which genes or which transcripts or which patterns are actually important rather than putting our own bias into what we think is important. We looked at the uh, bloods of people, uh, patients with multiple sclerosis, with Alzheimer's, with Parkinson's, with ALS, and we found this remarkable common denominator. The RNAs in the blood of these various different neurologic diseases were all components of the neutrophil system and mast cells. So that was our first clue that in fact we need to focus on remnant innate immune components because it's a biomarker for disease, it's also a target for therapeutics. We were fortunate to uh, be introduced to Professor Einoff at Stanford and her amazing collection of, of samples from patients with dengue fever. And so we did a proof of concept study blinded and we were astonished that after we broke the code, we were seeing great overexpression of the innate immune system in those people that had severe dengue. The applications to the current problem of COVID-19, we could put in the hands of clinicians a blood test or a saliva test for uh, disease severity and to be able to move as quickly as we can to show under the rigors of clinical trials that it works uh, and how accurate it works. 
If we could look at biomarkers and understand who is going to progress to the most severe form of disease, it also could change the therapies that we would offer to that patient. This is where we could have tremendous impact on the whole uh, course of a disease. To test the hypothesis that uh, containing innate immunity means better patient outcomes, then it means that we need to work with every uh, academic, commercial scientist there are and use the rigors of the scientific method to prove whether it works or not. Dr. Ehrlich coined the famous term magic bullet, a therapeutic treatment for each disease. What we think we've filled in the gap is we may have found the magic target. And if it's true, I must tell you that I will be extremely proud to have learned that 140 years later, the one missing gap was how do we find the magic target for his magic bullets?